I'm joined here with Erin Blair, who is the Upper Canada Local Teacher President at the uh, Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario. Thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, the first question uh, I'm going to be throwing your way is regarding the recent letter that was sent out to the Upper Canada District School Board. Uh, and um, I just wanted to ask you, what is the purpose of the, this letter? And what, uh, what are you as a collective hoping to achieve? Well, among the six different union groups, we've all found that we're having the same frustrations. Uh, we each have our unique issues, if you will, being different locals, but we've, we're finding that uh, in the overall context, we're having the same issues with the board, and we wanted to impress upon them that we're, impress upon them that fact that we are united, we're, we are unsatisfied with the direction things have gone. And uh, speaking of the direction and the dissatisfaction there, what would you say some of the biggest issues with this reopening plan have been? Well, we recognize that it's, a reopen it's reopening during a pandemic. So there's bound to be some underlying issues. We, we, we expected that and we, we understand that. But some of the decisions by the Upper Canada District School Board have exacerbated the issues that we're being faced with. So in the summer, the plan going forward would have been that we would have been had uh, brick and mortar schools as they refer to it as and a virtual school so students who are unable for whatever reason to attend school in person would have been part of the virtual school uh, but in late august the board changed directions and they added uh, a dimension to it that we didn't expect and weren't, weren't uh, consulted with and what they did was they added for teachers so that not only would they teach their in class which on a, on a good day can be a challenge um, you know, making sure that students in front of you are engaged in learning and, and so on and so forth. They added the element of synchronous learning, in other words, live streaming. So at the time we said that was unacceptable because there are two different modes of instruction and that um, both, both groups would suffer as a result of trying to do two things at the same time. And as the school year moved on in September, they doubled down, if you will, and they added two more layers so that the teachers are also responsible for not only the kids in front of them, the students live streaming, but also what they refer to as asynchronous learning. So in other words, students not live on uh, in the live connection, but uh, asynchronous, one type was digital. So students would receive um, their lessons and so forth through the internet, through email, or through the, the portal that they have. And another group, asynchronous non-digital, would receive paper and pencil copies. So it, it <laughs> they've combined four different modes of instruction into one. And we're saying that's not only is it an impossible task and a burden on the teacher, it's just poor pedagogy. And we've had a couple different academics weigh in on that exact point that it's not a good way of teaching. Absolutely, it's biting off more than, more than you can chew is essentially the issue that you feel like you're facing at the moment. Uh, there have been some reports that have come out recently sort of stating that though parents seem to be happy with the way it's been reopening, it's been very mentally draining and very difficult on both the pupils and the teachers as well. Is this, uh, what's your perspective on that? Is that something that you feel is, is a correct assert, like, um, result? Um, I would say not entirely. When we, uh, when we saw that the board was going ahead with the uh, synchronous learning, the live streaming, we, the, we, uh, pr we published an open letter to parents because that's the only way we could access them was through social media. And, uh, and a couple of few days later, the board, the chairman of the trust, board of trustees came out with a letter to rebut it, but was perhaps, um, I guess, nasty might be a word I might want to use. Mm. And all of the parents were on side with the union. So in action, actual fact, I had the public and parents defending what we were saying, which was, is, was a nice surprise, to be quite honest. But uh, no, the parents, the parents totally understand what we're trying to promote. Um, you know, we're, teachers are concerned about the student learning. And uh, you say parents are concerned. If other parents are concerned and haven't really reached out yet, how could they, how could they get in touch to show their support? What we've asked parents to do, and our, well, we've asked our teachers who are parents of, of, uh, of our upper Canada students, is to write to their trustees and, um, and express their concern and write to their MPPs as well. So my understanding is that has been happening, but uh, we've not been able to affect change just yet. Absolutely. And uh, if any changes to occur, then uh, the uh, 
as many voices as possible is absolutely vital. Uh, looking for towards the next step at the moment, what are you hoping will be ha will happen in the immediate future, in the immediate aftermath, let's call it, of this letter? Well, we're hoping that the the trustees would um, would engage us. Um, we've been engaging them over the course of uh, since late August uh, and try and come up with a solution. I mean, money was an issue that they stated was a was why they went the route they did. Uh, um, and EFO is an organization among other teacher federations have been advocating the government for you know the proper reopening money so that these issues wouldn't spring up. However, uh, in the, initially this was the only board in the province we knew of who went this route and certainly that I know of that have done the four and one. So our hope would be that they would go the route that other schools and boards have done and have in bricks and mortar in class teaching and a virtual school uh, just so that the teachers in, in the school can focus on the students in front of them and the teachers in the virtual school there's a there'd be a synergy created where they're working together to create the you know the right time through the internet and again there are two different styles two different modes of instruction them and um, as I, I previously mentioned uh, a couple of academics have weighed in on this saying that you know what they're trying to do here is is very is not good pedagogy no, I understand. I understand. And um, just looking a little bit closer to home here, how uh, for, for us anyway, in, in our region here in Prescott, Russell, how is this, uh, how are these issues um, affecting the children and the teachers? I won't speak to the students so much, not being in the classroom, but I can certainly speak to the teachers. And uh, we've done, we have an open survey with our teachers to try and keep track of how they are doing. And I can tell you that, um, this stress and concern is, is more like is more than I've ever seen before in my 12 years as a released officer with the Teachers Federation. We have uh, a number of teachers who are out on stress leave. And, and it's largely because, I mean, pandemics are stuff in situations, obviously, but the, the problem that I'm seeing are teachers are trying to do the impossible. They're trying to make work what they've been given, which can't happen, but they're, they're trying anyway. And so we're finding teachers are just, are finding it overwhelming and, and too much and uh, and our, the number of people off on stress leave has increased quite a bit from years past. I, it's by way of example, when we first launched the survey, uh, we have roughly 1,150 members. Uh, within seven hours of the survey being released, we had 200 teachers who responded to the survey to explain how they were feeling. And there, it was incredible the emotions that were pouring out in those surveys, how, how stressed and utterly defeated some of them are feeling. Well, Aaron Blair, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we will most definitely be keeping a close eye on this issue in the coming weeks and uh, wish you all the best with, uh, with any of the, the issues you're facing.